I got really ambitious. Ambitious for a guy who still to this day cannot settle down and focus on anything for more than five or 10 minutes at a time, and that was to read 50 books. But again, it's not about reading 50 books. It's not even about reading one book. It's not about reading a chapter, a paragraph, a sentence. It's about that decision when you're sitting at your desk at the end of the day, or when you're lying on the couch, or flicking through your Facebook feed, and you put down the phone. You pick up a book and you read one word. If you read one word, you'll read two words, three words. You'll read a sentence, a paragraph, a page, a chapter, a book. You'll read 10 books, 30 books, 50 books. In 2012, I got really ambitious. I set 24 New Year's resolutions. 12 of them were, to, were what I call giving resolutions, where I did 12 charitable things that didn't involve writing a check. But it's not without its failures. I tried to donate blood, and they rejected me because I'd lived in the UK. I tried to donate my sperm, they rejected me because I was too old. I tried to donate my hair, and it turns out nobody wants gray hair. <laughs> so here I was trying to do something to make myself feel good, and it was having the opposite effect. So anyway, I've also had these 12 learning resolutions to learn 12 new skills. And when I was done with unicycling, parkour, slacklining, jumping stilts, and drumming, my wife suggested I learn how to knit. And I'll be honest, I wasn't all that passionate about knitting. But one day I'm sitting under this 40-foot tall eucalyptus tree that's 2.6 miles up the Cold Spring Trail in Santa Barbara, and I'm thinking, that tree would look really cool if it were covered in yarn. <laughs> and so I went home and I Googled this, and it turns out this is a thing people do. It's called yarn bombing. You wrap these public structures with yarn. And the second annual International Yarn Bombing Day was just 82 days away. <laughs> so for the next 82 days, no matter where I was, if I was in a board meeting, on the trading floor, in an airplane, or in the hospital, I was knitting one stitch at a time. And 82 days later, I had done my first ever yarn bomb. <laughs> and the response to it blew me away. So I kept going <laughs> with bigger, more ambitious projects that required more engineering skills. And in 2014, I set the goal to wrap six massive boulders in Los Padres National Forest at the top of the mountains. But if I was going to pull this off, I'd need help. So at the, this point, I had a few thousand followers on social media as the yarn bomber. <laughs> and I started getting packages, lots of packages. 388 contributors from 36 countries in all 50 states. In the end, I didn't wrap one massive boulder. I wrapped 18. So I kept going with bigger, more ambitious projects that would require me to work with new materials like fiberglass and wood and metals, which culminates in a project that is currently at TMC here in Tucson where I wrapped the children's hospital. Along the way, I stopped knitting. I never really liked it, <laughs> but I like crocheting. <laughs> so I started making these seven inch granny squares because that's the standard granny square. And I thought along the way, why am I stopping at seven inches? I need big stuff. So I started making bigger granny squares. And one day I come home from a business trip and I've got this really large granny and I went to the web site of Guinness. I was curious, what's the world's largest granny square? And it turns out there's no category for it. So I applied, and they rejected me. So I appealed, and they rejected me. I appealed again, and they said, fine. If you make it 10 meters by 10 meters, we'll create a new category, and you will be a Guinness World Record holder. So for the next two years, seven months, 17 days, one stitch at a time, I finally reached more than half a million stitches, incorporated more than 30 miles of yarn, and I am now the official Guinness World Record holder for the largest crochet granny spread.
along the way, I've garnered an awful lot of attention for my escapades. Uh, I've been featured in Newsweek magazine, Art News, which is kind of the Bible for artists. But what I want you to realize when you hear these things, I'm still that C minus student. I'm still that kid who can't settle down or focus for more than five or 10 minutes at a time. And I remain a guy who possesses no special gift of talent or skill. All I do is take really big, ambitious projects that people seem to marvel at, break them down to their simplest form, and then just make marginal improvements along the way to improve my odds of achieving them. And so the whole reason I'm giving this talk is I'm hoping to inspire several of you to pull some of those ambitious dreams that you have for yourself off the bookshelf and start pursuing them by making that marginal adjustment to your routine. Thank you. <laughs>